Praise God. Well, let's let's go ahead and pray. I, I have a word that I've got to release uh, for us and still give us time to get our prayer requests in here and celebrate. Amen. Father, we just thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for who you are and who we are in you. We thank you, God, that you're a promise keeper and that you said you would never leave us nor forsake us. We thank you that you have faithfully kept us all through the years. You've kept us this last year. And we thank you, Lord, that you're still our keeper and you never sleep nor slumber. So we will be kept for all of eternity. We just ask that you would bless us, strengthen us and empower us. Open our ears. Help us to hear what you're saying. Help us to grab a hold of your truth and cleave unto it as with our dear as for our dear lives. Lord, we just thank you for the victory in Jesus name. Amen. amen. Church said, amen. amen. Praise God. OK. Uh, I'm going to watch that clock. But let me let me just. The re, I, I, first of all, let me just say thank you guys for coming out because this is this is easy to miss. But the reason I wanted us to have this meeting tonight is because this is I believe, like I said on Sunday, this is a pivotal time in our church. And I believe that this is even landmark stuff that's getting ready to happen. And so we need to be in the position that we are in so that we can go ahead and go forward into what God has in store. Amen. Amen. So this is my prayer journal. I never preach out of this, but I'm I'm sharing with you guys some stuff today, which that's this has never happened since I've been a preacher. I've never shared from my prayer journal. But God mandated me to share these things um, today. So this came to me. Let me just start. And this is not like a. It's not like sermon format or whatever. So just receive it. Amen. Yeah. I'm only recording it. So I'll have it in the archive. So when stuff starts happening, we always can look back. OK, so God um, and, you know, you guys know numbers are important with God, right? Yeah. OK, so. 11, 7, 19. So what stands out to you in that set of numbers? Seven. So seven. Okay. So seven is, um, you know, God's number. We know that. But one of the things that uh, we are to gather from it, it's, it's that, that number of rest. And so when you rest, what does God do? God works. And so he spoke this to me, 11, 7, 19. Overflow is coming January 2020. But it's important for you to recognize the date, 7. So it's not going to be overflow from my work. You guys with me? Overflow from what he is doing. Overflow is coming January 2020. Fear not, I'm just reading some scripture, Joel 2.21 in the King James Version. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Joel 2.21, King James Version. And verse uh, 23, now you guys can just, you know, take notes or get this stuff later. But verse 23, he says, be glad then, ye children of Zion. Zion is the church. And rejoice in the Lord. Um, your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately. He will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. Look at your name and say first month. first month. OK, first month. That is January. So he's speaking to me and he's letting me know first month. And then he has me write January 2020. January 2020. So remember, this came to me 11, 7, 19, 7, God's number. Uh, the key thing he's having me focus on is rest. OK. He says, and the floor shall be full of wheat and vat shall overflow. Look at your name and say overflow. OK. One, uh, they will overflow with wine and oil and I will restore. Look at your name and say restore. restore. OK, so he will restore to you. The years that the locusts have eaten. I know that we've experienced this as a church. Maybe you all have experienced this personally. 
where you feel like you've taken some hits and you've had some loss. It seems like the locust has eaten away at some stuff. Anybody here with it? Okay. But he says, I will restore. And so I want you guys to pay attention to this because he's going to restore to you the year. So everything that was taken is coming back. Everything that you might have missed out on is coming back. Those opportunities are not gone. See, the enemy can cause delays, but he cannot cause a denial. The denial has to come from God. God has to tell you no. If God hadn't told you no, then it's still a yes. You just got to stay in position to receive it. Amen. And so he says, I will restore to you the years that the locust had eaten the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm. My great army, which I sent among you and you shall eat plenty. Look at your name, say plenty. So I want you to pay attention to these words. So far, we've covered uh, overflow, restore, uh, plenty. And then he says, and be satisfied. How many of y'all want to be satisfied? How many of you want to be satisfied to where you're no longer looking and longing, but you're satisfied because what you've desired has come upon you? Okay, and say, he says, you'll be satisfied. And then you know what that's going to cause you to do is praise. See, there's going to be a praise breaking out, not because uh, people just praise because they have to. There's going to be a praise because God is doing it, because God is showing up and God is showing out. And you can't help but to praise him. Amen. Nobody has to make you praise him because you're going to want to praise him. And he says, um, let's see, you're going to praise the name of the Lord, your God that has dealt wondrously with you. Look at your name and say, God is dealing wondrously with me. Man, this is now not the time. That's why I said it's not the time to bring this new year in on the couch or doing something else. You've got to be very in tune to what God is doing. And he says, and my people shall never be ashamed and you shall know that I am in the midst of thee. And he's uh, in the midst of Israel. We know we're spiritual Israel. We're grafted in through Jesus. And that I am the Lord your God and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. And then I have in here in my notes, we've had a tough two years. We have in this church. These last two years have really been tough. And so maybe some of you guys had a tough two years. I don't know. Have you had any troubles going on the last couple of years? Anybody in here? Okay. But then God tells me clearly, but the drought is over. Come on, somebody. I'm, I'm telling you, this is a prophetic night, but the drought is over. So remember these dates, 11, 7, 19. That's when that word came to me. And I'm not going to share with you guys all of my journal, but the things that God told me to share, I will share. Okay. Um, there, this one here. This is just this. This is just an extra bonus for, for you guys. He gave me this on 1121. But, you know, of course, that's a multiple of seven. So you can get into that. But it's not, you know, I don't really have time for that on this one because I wasn't even going to share it. But I think it's so relevant. He said, do not consider your current condition. So this is very important. You cannot consider your current condition, the condition of the church, lack of people, lack of money. This is going for your own personal life. Don't consider those things. Don't even look at where you're at right now. If you're not where you want to be, don't pay attention to it. If you consider it, that's not what God's saying. He says, do not consider your current condition. Only consider the promise of God. Only consider the promise of God. Now, you can take that as a personal word to you. No matter what you're going through, don't consider it. So what does that mean? Don't ponder it. I don't care what it looks like right now. Only thing I can consider is the promise of God. And we know that Abraham didn't consider his situation, right? We know Abraham is the father of faith and he didn't consider his uh, situation. He staggered not the promises of God um, through unbelief, but he was strong in faith. And so you have to be a person that understands that. You have to understand that. And, you know, men, we were just talking here, one of the brothers there, but 1121. God was speaking to me about the gifts. He says, for the gifts and call are of God are irrevocable. He never was withdraws them. And so some of y'all been called to do some great things. God never changed his mind. He never pulled it back. He's releasing an anointing on you 
and he's going to have you do some great things in the earth. He never pulled it away. He doesn't change his mind about to whom he has given his grace for these things or what he has sent his call. That's Romans eleven twenty nine. And then this was encouraging to me, but I'm going to share it because this is an intimate um, meeting tonight. He told me, you know, he's given me clarity. God never changed his mind about Pastor Troy. And, you know, I need that was a, he gave me that at a time I needed to hear it. And he said, I, he said, I never changed my mind about you. And he said he never changed his mind about Word of Life Temecula Valley. So everything he said before, he never changed his mind. Even though others have changed, they've said different things. God says, I never changed. I've already approved of you and stay in position because stuff is coming that nobody can stop. Stuff is coming that nobody will be able to stop and they will be amazed. But the thing is, is I have to be a person and so do you. You have to be willing to say, I will not consider anything else. So what does that mean for me? I, I will never consider failure. Failure in the church is not something I will consider. Failure in your family is not something you can consider. Come on. You cannot even if you think about it for a second, you are considering it. And that I'm going to tell you right now, you need to repent of that because that is a seed. That will grow a tree that you don't want. And so don't consider it. Anything that you want, anything that you believe in God for, don't consider anything other than that. So that was just a bonus 1121. Now, 12, 5, 19, 12, 5. Number five. That's the number I, that God is having stand out right here. 12, 5, 19. He speaks to me. You guys know what the number five means, biblically speaking? Grace. Number five represents grace and goodness. So let's let's hear what God said on that day. So remember, overflows come in 2020. Seven, the number of rest. So it's not going to be from my labors and my efforts. It's going to be God's doing. Then he gives me this 12, 5, 19. See, some of you guys are ready for status changes. I already know it. I feel it in my spirit. You're ready for some things to shift, but you don't know how to make it shift. And the reason you don't know how is because God doesn't want you to do it. He wants you to be in position to receive it. So 12, 5, 19. The Lord. Now, this is uh, Deuteronomy 28, 11, and this is just different versions. I'm just going to read it out because I got to keep going. But the Lord, I don't want you to pay attention to these words. The Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods. That's Deuteronomy 28, 11, King James. The Lord shall make thee. So am I self-made or God made? Are you a self-made? You can see some of y'all going to say, uh, you would have said, I'm a self-made millionaire. But some of you are going to say, I'm a God-made millionaire. So the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods. Now that's the King James. The NLT says, the Lord will give you prosperity. So make and give. What's that got to do with you? Yeah, you got to receive. But any work involved for you? No, Okay. The Lord will grant you abundant prosperity. That's the NIV. So make, give, grant. Where's our work? We just have to be in a position to receive it. Deuteronomy 28, 11 in the message, God will lavish you with good things. So make, give, grant, and lavish. What part of that says I got to work for it? None of it. And so that's 12, five. That's grace. The Lord. This is the Lord's doing. Receive it for your family. Receive it for the church in Jesus name. Powerful kings and mighty nations will satisfy your every need. How many of y'all ready to start getting money globally? Amen. You're ready to start getting uh, picking up on stuff down. Just stuff coming to you from all over the world. Well, he says the wealth transfer is coming and that's Isaiah 60, 16. So mighty kings, powerful kings and mighty nations will satisfy your every need. And so we will never lack anything. Y'all ready? We're doing good. 12, 9, 19. What number should you be paying attention to? Nine. Nine. 
And this is 919. So there's two nines. There is a, a, a significance here. He gave me even further clarity on 12, 19, 19. Like, I don't get to pick when God speaks to me. Just so you guys know, I pay attention to the date later. And so, but I want you to understand this significance of nine. This is very important. And, and I'm going to share this. And this is almost like one of those things where you're like, wow, hopefully the church is mature enough to hear, to receive this, but I'm sure you guys will. Let me just give you some information on the number nine, the significance of the number nine, uh, a symbol of completeness. How many months does it take to have a baby? Nine. Right. And so it's a symbol of complete uh, of uh, completeness. If you've seen the number nine a couple of times in recent the recent few days, and this is this was happening to me. I was seeing this nine all the time. He says, if you have seen the number nine a couple of times in the recent few days, it could be a sign that divine forces are are, are sending you. So they're sending a sign. They want you to know that they are with you all the time and they are ready to follow you on your spiritual journey. Divine forces. Hebrews 1 14 in the, in the King James. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those of us who shall be the heirs of salvation? Who's that? So for us, we have angels that are ministering. So that means they're working and serving and they're waiting at your command. Now, why am I getting this on 12, 9, 19? Then I get further clarity, 12, 19, 19. Well, God has let me know that number nine is important. So before, remember, uh, we started out with the number seven, which God is telling me the rest. But it's like, this is all the stuff I'm going to do. Now he's letting me know I got divine forces. How many of y'all ready for some angels to show up in your stuff? They are there. They're ready. They're ready to work for God's people. But we've got to focus on the right things. We cannot be discouraged. We cannot be downtrodden right now. We've got to look to the hills from which cometh our help. And so he says that, and this is, I had to do some research on this to get clarity, but divine forces are ready to help. They're ready to step into action. This is really good. The number nine is announcing a better period that might be in front of you. How many y'all ready for a better period? A better season. The number nine is announcing a better period that might be in front of you. And it's telling you to look forward to positive changes. So you guys get ready for some very positive changes that are coming now. Let me just break this down for you. And I'm, I'm watching my clock. So this, I told you guys we, we would have a uh, house specific word. You can always apply these things to your own personal life. But I, I've, I've got to tell you, uh, some of y'all been with us a long time. Some of you have not. But this has been quite a journey. 12, 9, 19. So the number nine, I already got that, right? That's, that's the, that completion. Y'all ready for this? Y'all sure? You sure you're ready for this? Okay. So as a ministry, now, remember this number nine. As a ministry, we have been pregnant for nine years. For nine years. So why is that nine years? We've been in ministry longer than that, but we conceived something at a certain time. I believe that we got pregnant at a certain time. And so as a ministry, we have been pregnant for nine years. 2020, we give birth. Come on, I'm, man. 2020, we give birth. And the baby is healthy. And so now you guys got to just metaphorically go with me on this. Obviously, it doesn't take a, a woman to nine years to have a child. But this is spiritual. God is connecting this. He's connecting this completeness of this number nine for me. Because there are struggles, man. And sometimes when you go through struggles, you're like, what's going on? And God brings clarity. And for the vision is yet for an appointed time. And it hastens to the end fulfillment. It will not deceive or disappoint. Though it tarry, wait earnestly for it. 
because it will surely come and it will not be behind hand. So that means it's right on time. This baby ain't late. This baby ain't early. But the devil's been trying to get us to abort it. He's been trying to get us to abort it. And then lastly, he's even hoped for stillborn. But yet we've not been. We've stayed the course. And so pregnant. So what does that mean? God put something in us. And we've been pregnant for nine years. And we didn't have opposition come up from the left, from the right. And they've tried to get us to abort, to quit, to do whatever, everything possible. But 2020, we give birth. And there's no reversing it. 2020, we give birth. We've spoken some big things. We've had big dreams. I mean, you guys have been around me. I've prophesied and spoke some big, giant stuff. And it seems like in the middle of that, we have families leaving. We have this going on. But we were still pregnant. And God was our keeper. And God was keeping us safe all along. And so, uh, He's given me these scriptures. The smallest family will become a thousand people and the tiniest group will become a mighty nation at the right time. I, the Lord, will make it happen. You guys been picking up on this theme. It's not going to be because I came up with some fancy campaign when this thing is going to flip. And it's just going to be God's doing. And we'll just be here to receive it, but it's going to be him doing it. And we have to understand that he says growth and global influence. And you guys already know some of y'all know the global influence has already happened. But global influence, this thing is about to kick up. OK, so let's break down the pregnancy. I still got time. Y'all OK, this ain't too deep for you, right? So we've been pregnant for nine years. Spiritually. 2020, we're about to give birth. So I want I'm saying this because I want you guys to be excited. See, I know stuff stirring up, but I want to tell the church so that the church would know and they would be excited and be on board. You'll be on board and looking forward to the positive changes that we ever have already spoken about. So we have gone through morning sickness. Those of you that have given birth, you know what I'm talking about. That first trimester is rough. And so we've gone through morning sickness the first three years. The first three years after getting pregnant was tough. I had that first three years. I had a I had even appointed. I had assistant pastor and everything. I had to appoint these people first three years of being pregnant. Not the first three years of ministry. See, we went through ministry in the wilderness just kind of finding out who we are. Then God made it clear who we are. Then he impregnated us with vision. And it really kicked off in this building. My, the first three years, that first trimester was rough. I had people close to me, like super close, just do all kind of crazy stuff. But I was still pregnant. Y'all with me? So they left, but I didn't leave. Amen. They folded, but the church didn't fold. I mean, some of you, I don't tell everybody all these things, but I mean, I had stuff showing up like, you know, on days where I'm supposed to celebrate. One of us, I was supposed to celebrate my mom's birthday. And then I, I get approached and told some crazy stuff. And, you know, people that got keys and all that. Yeah, we're out of here. Wow. You're telling me today? <laughs> First trimester is always rough. And so we had the morning sickness. Then the second three years, we had body changes. You guys has been women has dealt with this. You know what it's like. You start, you know, moving around. You're like, damn, stuff's changing. <laughs> I mean, like I'm, you're trying to make some adjustments, right? And so we had some adjustments in that period. And you know, new people come in. You know, we had some adjustments. We, we started doing OK uh, and all that kind of stuff. And we had even a good period there for a while. But then 
we start having growth pains and birth pains the last three years. And so when the, the last three years, when it first starts, it's good, right? Because, like, think about it. When you're having a baby, you know, then you really fool. You know, you're like, okay. And it's, you go through a period where it's okay. But then when it's time getting close to delivery, stuff starts getting difficult, right? 2019 was probably, mm, could we say our roughest year? Why is that? See, right before birth, things get rough. Why? Because the enemy is trying to get you to abandon the whole idea. And so 2019, things started getting really rough. And so, but then what happens? What happens when the mama's about to have that baby? Oh, so y'all, y'all with me, right? I'm, it's 1149. Y'all, I'm, t- I'm only like, this is stuff I would never share with. I would only share this with my wife because I know most people can't get this, but I, tr- I believe you guys can. It's for such a time as this. And I believe you can get this. So the last three years been rough, but it comes towards that end. Boom. The water is about to break. Now get this. I get a vision from brother Lee. He shares this vision with me, which he never does. He shares it right before I preach on 12, 8, 19. 12, 8, 19. Now remember that 12, 8, 19. That's one day before God even gave me all the stuff I'm tell- sharing you guys. He, he shared a vision with me in, at church on 12, 8. He saw mighty rushing waters breaking through. What does that sound like? What happens when that water breaks? It, it ain't, you know, it, it's, 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 it's going. He saw mighty rushing waters breaking through. The waters were white because they were roaring and powerful. So it's like an overtaking. So the enemy's been trying so hard, but now it's too late. Now it's too late and we're about to give birth. And so uh, he said the floodgates are open. That's what he told me right here in this church. He didn't know what I've been praying. Med- he don't know all that, but he's connected. The floodgates are open. Now, that took me back to a vision I had in the early stages of ministry. We were in my old office and I had a vision of a dam breaking somewhere between. It might have been 06 and 07, somewhere in there. But I had a vision of a dam breaking. It was like it was held back, held back, held back. And then it. It busted. And so God brought all this back to my remembrance. And then he lets me know among the gods, there is none like me. He says, there are no works like my works. Psalm 86, eight for thou art great and doest wondrous things. Thou art God alone. And so what is all this? Why is this going forth right now? This is going forth so that now we would be prepared. We will be prepared to receive. And so he says, sanctify yourselves for tomorrow. The Lord will do wonders among you. Joshua three, five. That's why we have this fast coming up. We have to prepare ourselves for these great things that God has in store. And so if you believe that. Maybe you've had some opposition. Maybe you've had some tough times, some struggles. Well, we have too. We're the church. We're all a part of this. But isn't it exciting to know that God said, they, listen, they may have spoken bad about you. They may have come against you. There's many people, they try to hurt us financially. They try to do all kinds of stuff. But God said they couldn't touch the baby. They couldn't harm the baby. The baby is healthy. Not only is the baby healthy, but the baby is coming forth when? 
in 2020. So I'm telling you right now that things are about to shift. They're about to shift for every family that is plugged into this ministry. If you've been believing, you've been staying with us and you've been on board, we love you and we appreciate you. But the only way the church is blessed is you're going to have to get blessed. So you guys got to start to look forward to stuff changing in your life. You got to start looking forward to things that you have been believing God for. Maybe God impregnated you with something. Maybe God impregnated you with destiny, vision or something. Maybe he put it in there, but the enemy tried to take it away. Uh, I'm going to tell you right now, 2020 is the year of giving birth. This you won't hear. You probably will not hear any other pastor tell you that 2020 is a year of giving birth. But that's what we talking about over here this year. This year coming, we give birth. This year, we'll see dreams fulfilled. This year, we'll see manifestation. We'll see things that we once thought about and maybe we forgot about it. But I believe that because I'm going to be praying and God's going to be stirring up some stuff. He's going to be stirring up some gifts and some things that he's placed inside of you all. And you all are going to get excited about it. And you're going to say, Lord, that thing never went away. That's because you kept the baby. You did not miscarry. You did not miscarry. You kept that child and it's getting ready to come forth. And when it comes forth, what is that? Great times of celebration, right? The mom is in labor. Uh, I was blessed to see uh, my children be born. And it's tough. Not for me, but, you know. <laughs> but when that baby is born, you want to see a frown turn into a smile? Y'all ready to see frowns turn into smiles at Word of Life? Amen. Amen. Y'all ready to y'all ready to see this thing happen to where instead of where are the people? We start talking about where am I going to sit? Y'all, anybody here with me? Where am I going to sit? This will happen. Now, God mandated me to share that so that you guys will know it's recorded. Um, like I said, it's not for Facebook and all that, but this is going to happen. He spoke to me so clearly. So get ready for great things to happen this year. Some people are going to see you rise to levels you've never been. And then they're going to say, where'd you come from? And you're going to say, man, I just been spending a little time in the wilderness. But but I'm not new to this. And see, some of you will go to levels and you will be able to operate proficiently at that next level. How are you going to operate proficiently at that next level? Because you've gained experience, right? You've gained experience. A mom starts learning about how to be a mom when they're carrying that baby. Because there's a lot of sacrifices that has to happen even before the child is born. We have sacrificed a plenty. And so guess what? We're about to rejoice and celebrate. And once again, I'll say it with all confidence, the baby is healthy. So if you got your prayer list, come up here, put it up here now. Come on, you got three minutes and 35 seconds. I want you to put that prayer list down there and hopefully you made it big because 2020 is going to be bigger than any other year. It's going to be greater than any other time. We're going to experience God's move, God's power like never before.